hello welcome back to my channel in this video i am making classic simple and delicious jollof rice so these are the ingredients first of all i have some onions some scotch bonnets some ginger and i have some red peppers a lot of red peppers and then some plum tomatoes so this is obviously batch i'm not using all of this for one pot of jello fries i'm making this up going to store some in the freezer and going to use some to make my jello fries it's really handy to save some time now i learned this little tip from my friend and basically you just uh, wash and clean your peppers stick them in the oven just like this and let them bake and kind of char a little and it just adds an extra little element of smokiness to your jollof rice which we all love and it's such a handy tip really um, and there you see um, it looks a bit burnt but I want that to happen <laughs> and I'm just gonna turn it around so that it cooks on the other side as well and it really does make a smoky difference Once my peppers were nicely charred, I transferred them into a blender along with the other vegetables that we talked about earlier and blend them into a lovely puree. Of course you can use tinned plum tomatoes for this, that's no problem. I just like to use the fresh ones because there's less water content in it and it's fresh so yeah, I like it. But of course, sometimes I do use tinned plum tomatoes as well. Now once my vegetables have been nicely blended and nice and smooth, I transfer them into a pot to boil to allow the mixture to cook and the water to evaporate as much as possible. And I like to leave the lid off so that it will evaporate quicker and all the steam can escape as long as it's not splashing everywhere. Yeah, so you can see that it's kind of dry, so I'm happy with that. I'm confident it's done cooking, so off with the heat. So next, I have my pot with some vegetable oil. Be careful how much oil you put, because if you put too much oil, you end up with really greasy jello fries. You're better putting less oil than too much oil, but then you also want enough oil to make it nice and luscious and delicious. So I've added some onions and also some frozen tomato puree into my pot um, to fry. So with the tomato puree, you want to make sure that you fry it until it's like almost burnt. That's what I learned from my mom. I'm not really sure why, but you're supposed to fry the tomato puree really, really well. I also like to add some Maggi cube right at the base um, with the onions just to flavor the base a little bit. So I used a star cube, I think it's called a star, a Maggi cube. And I also add my bay leaf at this point and some dried thyme. I'm, I've always been told that jollof rice has a lot of thyme. It needs a lot of thyme. So plenty of thyme, dried thyme and then a little spoon of curry powder. This is very optional, some people don't add curry powder. And then this is my pepper mixture that you just saw me cook, but here I had it in the fridge for a day or two. It's definitely important for you to fry the pepper mixture at the start really, really well, because that's what gives it that rich party rice feeling and flavor. And then I added some chicken stock powder. Mm -hmm. 
and then I added a couple of nor cubes. So after about 10 minutes of the pepper base frying, I was happy and satisfied that it was fried enough and I went ahead and added my washed rice. So this is long grain rice. You can obviously use something like basmati rice for this but you have to keep in mind that with basmati rice you have to use a lot less water than the long grain easy cook rice. Okay so yes yeah, so there's my rice added and mixing it all together and then I went ahead and added some boiling water enough to cook the rice soft but don't worry if you don't put quite enough water in this you can still add some splashes of water um, during the cooking but you definitely don't want to add too much water to this otherwise you'll have mushy jollof rice so obviously I just tasted my jollof rice to see how much more salt I needed to add I don't add my salt till the very end because I like I like to add it at the end to finish off the seasoning so there you have it my jollof Jollof rice is ready to sit and cook on very very low heat so it basically needs to steam till it's nice and soft and here is about 15 minutes since it's been sitting there steaming and you want to just come and stir it around a little bit to allow the heat to evenly distribute and cook the rice evenly after a few more minutes of steaming here is my rice it is done i did stir it a couple more times and um, before it came to this point but you just really need to just leave it to steam and do its thing and the rice will dry right up and become nice and fluffy like this I went ahead and added a little knob of butter to the jollof fries and the purpose of this is just to add a little touch of luxury and richness to the jollof fries but you really really don't have to do this but this can come in handy if your jollof rice didn't have enough oil or you know it seemed a little bit dry you can add some butter and that will bring it right back up to how it should be so here it is all done and it was really really delicious i think your eyes can pretty much tell you yourself you don't need need me to talk extensively about it one thing i do want to mention if you find that your jello fries isn't as soft as you would like you really can just add a splash of water at the very end and let it steam for a bit longer and it will be absolutely fine so there you go thank you so much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it and i hope that you learned a little from this i really do have a good day and thanks for watching bye